Alright, so before I start the video, I decided to make these into two parts because I was going to show both the Wise Thin client and the EEEPC, but I have decided that they deserve two separate videos because both of them were pretty interesting, and I have quite a bit of footage, so I don't want this video to be an hour, so I decided I'm just going to split the videos so that way you guys can watch them, and I'll probably release this one on Monday, and then the other one on Tuesday, so they'll be a day apart from each other. So you guys will expect a lot more episodes, but as you know, I need to end at a certain date, so that's why that's going to happen. So anyways, you're going to be watching the video on the Thin Client. I might show the other one as well a little bit, but this video is primarily focused on the Thin Client. So anyways, let's start the video! Hey guys, it's Julia here, and today we have these two computers that we're going to look at for this looking back video. Now this is a wise thin client, I've never actually showed this in a video, but pretty much I got this computer I think a few years back, well really it's a thin client, it's not necessarily a computer, but I got it a few years back I believe from my brother because, you know, a while back he gave me like a ton of computers and stuff from a recycling center. And I believe this one he gave me as well. I think both of these he did because he basically, you know, shipped me boxes with computers in them. And a lot of the computers from my collection probably came from him. So this is a thin client and these are interesting. And it's kind of dirty and I'm probably going to get rid of it to be honest just because there's not really much you can do with it. I know I messed with this like a year or two ago. I can't remember when. But I know I did, and it wasn't really that special, and the software was really old, and I really couldn't get it to work properly. I did have to reset it because it wouldn't obviously, like, I couldn't get in it since I had a password and stuff like that. I don't remember how I reset it, but hopefully I won't have to again because I don't know if there's a password or not on it now. There might be because it might require it, but... Hopefully not, because if it if there is, I probably don't remember it. But we're going to hook it up. I have a universal charger. I'm hoping this will work. This tip seemed to fit, but there is a few others that fit as well. But I put the one that seems to fit the best, because the only way I can power up most of my computers is from universal chargers, because I didn't get the chargers with them. Anyways, I'll be right back as I'm going to hook up this computer. Alright guys, so I've plugged everything in so far except the power because it might power up, but this is what the back looks like. We got some USB ports, audio ports, and Ethernet. We have two DVIs, and then we have some other ports up there like for the old mouse and keyboard and all that good stuff. So, we are going to plug it in and power it on. Now, I'm going to turn on the monitor. I'm hoping that this adapter works for the, for the monitor because I, I don't think I've tested this before. So, let's plug it in. I always plug in last because, as you know, there is a chance that it could power up. So, I always do that. I'm hoping that this connector works, like this adapter, because I haven't powered this up in a while, so I don't remember how I powered it up, but let's just see. Oh. I don't think it's happy. Because it's lighting this up and... Oh. Okay. I guess it is powering up. I, I don't remember this because I have not messed with this in a really long time. So, this is what it looks like, I guess. Let's see. These are some things that it's saying. If you want to read it. It's complaining about the time and date, so the CMOS is obviously bad. So, you know, let's actually look, go to the setup. There's a password. Of course there's a password. Well, I don't know the password, so... I'm just gonna have to hit escape because I guess they put a password on it so there's no way I can actually go in there and do anything. But hopefully it boots and hopefully there's not a password on the OS because I wouldn't have any clue what it is. But I guess we'll see, right? Because I know I did reset this, but it might require a password. 
during setup, so I don't remember it. We got a mouse. Yeah, there's a username as you can see. Login. Uh, I don't know the user. So, cancel. Yeah, I don't know the username. I don't know any of the info because I haven't messed with this in so long. It's been at least a few years since I messed with it. I know I reset it, but I don't remember how because it was so long ago. But this is really old, as you can see. Too bad I can't get in it, though. I might have to resume a recording and try and get in it tomorrow, maybe, because I have no idea how to get into this anymore. I don't know the username, I don't know any of the information, and yeah, I don't remember how I reset it either. Well, that's unfortunate, guys, because I do want to look at this, but yeah, I guess we're out of luck right now until I can figure this out and I'm really tired because I'm recording at night so I really don't feel like messing with it being honest with you guys so I'm going to put this to a pause just gonna shut this down I'm gonna put this to a pause because I can't get in it because I don't remember the info and I will reset it again probably so I can get in it I don't think there was really anything on it. The software is really old. I actually got another one recently, another Wise, except this one is a zero client, but I'm, I can't power it up because this, is, this takes a 12 volt charger and mine's a 19 volt, and I don't wanna mess this up because it would be too much voltage meaning that I'd probably mess this up. So I may or may not show this in a video because I might just end up, you know, getting rid of it because I can't power it up. I don't even know if it works either and I don't know how, what I can do with it. But anyways, I'll stop the video here. You guys will probably be seeing another clip of me showing it once I get in it. All right, guys, so I have the thin client again. It is hooked up to my capture card, so it's not showing an output right now, but I'm gonna power it on so that you guys can see it because I figured out the information to get in it. So we're gonna be able to look at it now. Also, I'm not sure if I'm gonna split this video in two parts or if I'm just gonna have it as one because both of these systems were pretty interesting and I have a bit more footage of the other computer, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about that yet. It looks like nothing is showing up unless that's just my capture card. Yeah, there we go. I don't think it was plugged in all the way or it's loose, so hold on. All right, so let's just hit F1 to continue. Is it gonna work? You guys will see a more clear picture as well using the capture card. The other footage I got is also from the capture card. So it is booting up. I don't have the ethernet plugged in. I don't really see a need because this is really old and I actually tried to use it to RDP into my server earlier today and it didn't want to work. So it's just the software is so old on this that you just really can't do much with it. I was messing with it so I could show you guys what there is. So, the funny thing, the username is admin, and so is the password, because it's the default. So, I just tried the default info and it worked because I reset it and never changed the info. So we still have the default info. Also, I did fix the date earlier, but because either the CMOS is bad or it just doesn't have a battery, it reset again to 2007. Since when does this have wireless capabilities? I did not know that. This is what it looks like. 
There's a really old version of Firefox, so we're gonna look at that. Man, this is old. Look at that. You wanna take a guess at what version of Firefox this is? Also, this page didn't even load when there was internet. 2011, so Firefox version 3.6.23. Wow. This is, yeah, really old. Not something you should be using. Let's go back to that for a second because there's something I saw on there that looked interesting, which is this old Google logo. I actually remember that. Yahoo, Amazon, wow, there's a lot of stuff. Anyways, let's get out of this. So, yeah, I tried already peeing into a server. Um, this didn't work. I tried VNC on another system, which did work, but it was read-only, it seemed, even though it wasn't, so it just wasn't working right. And then I tried going into my Proxmox server with SSH, but because this doesn't support SSH keys, I was unable to authenticate, so it didn't work. So basically, the methods to connect to systems, which is what these thin clients are used for, they just didn't work. So, yeah, they're just, this, this system's just too old to really be able to do much. So, this is what it looks like. See, I went to, well, it has a VNC server, which I connected to VNC to, to it, but yeah, I actually did set this up and connect, and I was able to connect to the thin client, but the thin client couldn't connect to anything else, so I could connect to it but it couldn't really connect to anything else. It was just, yeah. So it does have some settings, like the display. Oh wow, 1024 by 768. I mean, it is hooked up to my capture card right now. Keyboard settings, mouse settings. I mean, it's just the basic settings. Appearance, there really isn't much you can do in here. There are like some backgrounds that you can set, but not very often. The font, I guess you can change it if you wanted, but yeah, I don't know, I'm not gonna mess with it. So you do have some options in here. I'm probably not gonna click on every single thing though, because there's like a lot here. Device settings. So, I don't know what all this is. Just settings for it itself. What is this? Just INI files. Or is that something else? Networks, which I didn't know it has wireless, but I guess it does. Power. It actually does go to sleep, that's surprising. You can even schedule when to wake it. That's pretty cool. Screensaver. Oh goodness, does that say? No bell? Oh my goodness. I'd rather just see a black screen, honestly. So here's the system information for anyone that wants to see it. This is really old and this Linux is really old as well. I think it's from like 2011 or something. Whatever all this is. Yeah, uh, copyright 2008, but then 2011. So this is really old. 2011 software and this is probably not you know the best CPU in the world either it's, it's really interesting to look at this though just because there's a lot I don't know what that is to be honest I mean it shows I guess USBs users there isn't really much because I guess these are the users, the admin, the thin user, and the guest, but they're not set up with really much, like, 
I, I logged into thin user and it had less things and again it was this the username and password so I'm guessing guest is the same way it's probably guest and guest root password that's interesting but this is an admin account so what is this Hmm, I am not sure what some of this stuff is because I've never actually had a modern thin client, nor have I actually really used it, but basically the general purpose of these thin clients is to be able to connect to other computers. Like, let's see, connection manager. So if I add, these are all the connection types you can do. I've not been able to test them all, I tried RDP, SSH, and VNC. I have not tried the other ones. Plus, I don't have, you know, those all those connection types, so I can't necessarily try every single one, but RDP was not giving me luck. It would either give an error or it would just close and not let me do anything. So, basically it wasn't really helpful. So there wasn't really much I could do. So really, honestly, I heard there is a way to, you know, possibly upgrade these or was a way, but there is no image up that I can actually, you know, use for it to get it on the system. And also the drive is only like one gig in size, like the actual internal drive, which is like nothing. Let's see, am I able, I think I was able to get a terminal up. Yeah. This has a ton of like weird, like if you look at the partition layout, df-h, you can see it's got all these weird things on here. Like different devices for like different things. And this is just really strange. Because this is what, you know, a file system looks like. And it's just so weird. I've not seen a file system so weird before. It would be really hard to recreate this with how much, you know, devices it has here. But basically, from research, there really isn't a way to get anything more modern on here. Unfortunately, because all the ways to upgrade it, there's no image I can actually download and get and put on here. If you guys have any ideas, you can leave comments, but I'm most likely throwing this away. And I think by the time you guys are seeing this video, it's already gonna be recycled because honestly, even if I can get it to work, it's still pretty old. I wouldn't, you know, use it. But basically it's just really old and it's not something I would use on a daily basis or anything like that. And I have other systems that I can already pee from, which is a much better alternative than to use something like this. Now, these are nice though to have, you know, thin clients to be able to connect to systems because, you know, they don't need to have super high specs to necessarily connect to another computer because you're just using it to connect to another system. But when it's this old, it's just not gonna work. Like, it's just sadly not gonna work. But yeah, this is basically the thin client. As I said, I tried to use it to connect to my servers without luck. It's just too old. The software is just too old. It can't handle it anymore. Even the browser is out of date. And there is a lot of things in here though. I think I already went to the network. Um, certificates, interesting. But yeah, there's just a lot of stuff that I don't even know, like VDA, I don't even know what that is. So, printing. Who would want to print on this? I mean, I guess you could, but maybe, oh, maybe it's to connect to a print server. I, I'm not sure. Kind of interesting. 2008. Oh, it's, a, it's based on Red Hat, it seems. Oh yeah, this is OpenSUSE Linux. That's right. Because when it boots up, it says OpenSUSE. So pretty much that that's what this looks like there really isn't much to it i couldn't get anything working like i said i just thought i'd show you know what it looks like and stuff before i get rid of it this might be a separate video from the other ones i'm not sure yet 
I might end up doing that just because, you know, smaller videos are better. And I'll probably have one of them go up on Monday and the other one go up on Tuesday. And then I'll have a Wednesday video. So this will be a little bit of a different week because these two systems, um, even though they're very, like, they're both basically desktops, that they're really interesting. And I found out some other things about the other EEE PC that are really interesting. But yeah, I'm just gonna shut this down. There really isn't much to do with it, and I'm gonna end up scrapping it. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. So that was showing the wise thin client I have. I do have another one, but I don't really have a proper charger for it, or your connector, I mean, because obviously it doesn't need a charger. It's not a laptop, but you know, the power adapter. But in case I don't show another video, I'll just say this now. Thanks for watching. It was great making this. It was fun. And that's the Wise Thin client. And have a good day. And bye-bye for now.